Sometimes people blame God when they really have no busy business blaming God. Today, I'm going to read you from Isaiah chapter 59 and talk to you about a couple of occurrences where God talks about things that are not his fault. Isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 and 2 says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Isaiah spoke to the people of Israel with a problem. They faced various deep crises, and they wondered why they had to deal with these trials. They asked a question as old as the book of Job which is often thought to be the oldest book in the Bible. The question is this, why do we suffer? Now, in answering the question for Judah, God first told them what was not the cause, and then he exposed what the true cause was. First, God said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. God's people wondered why God did not seem to rescue them from their trials. They wondered if perhaps God had diminished in his strength, if his hand had become shortened. Isaiah the prophet assured them that was not the case. This touches on one of the greatest problems in practical theology. How can there be a God of love and all power when there is also so much human suffering? I mean, if we loved someone and had the power to end his or her suffering, wouldn't we do it? Isaiah addressed those who wondered if God was perhaps not all-powerful, and that was why their suffering continued. Many years ago, the year was actually 1981, Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote a remarkably wide-selling book titled, when bad things happen to good people. That book sold more than half a million copies before it went to paperback. And it was on the New York Times bestseller list for a whole year. Now, a major point of Rabbi Kushner's book was to say that God is all loving, but he's not all powerful. He said that God is good, but he's not sovereign. So when bad things happen to good people, it's because events are out of God's control. So Rabbi Kushner advised his readers to learn to love God, I'm quoting him here, to learn to love God and forgive him despite his limitations. Now, with all respect to Rabbi Kushner, I would disagree with that and say that that is certainly not the God of the Bible. Because Isaiah tells us that the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Isaiah simply says, Behold this, see this. Going further, Isaiah tells us, Nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. The problem isn't that God lacks power. Perhaps he lacks knowledge of our problem or interest in our problem, but that isn't the situation at all, as Isaiah reminded us. God's ear is not heavy. To put it another way, he can hear us just fine. Now, Isaiah dealt with what the cause was. He says here, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. The problem isn't with God's power, isn't with his knowledge, it isn't with his interest, it's not with his hand or his ear. The problem is with our or maybe I should say my iniquities. Sin has separated you from your God. Now, in what way does sin separate us from God? Sin does not necessarily separate us from the presence of God, because God's present everywhere. And even Satan can have an audience with God. Sin does not separate us from the love of God, because God loves sinners. Yet we can say that there are several ways in which sin does separate us from God. Sin separates us from fellowship with God because at least at the point of our sin, we no longer think alike with God. 
Secondly, sin separates us from the blessing of God because at least at the point of our sin, we're not trusting God and relying on him. Sin separates us from some of the benefits of God's love. Even as the prodigal son was still loved by the father, but he didn't enjoy the benefits of the father's love while the prodigal son was in sin. Sin separates us in some way from the protection of God because he will allow trials to come our way to correct us. You see, it's very easy for us to blame our problems on everything except our iniquities. We will even blame God before seeing that the problem's with us. We often deny who God is before seeing that the problem lies with us. That's why Isaiah said, and your sins have hidden his face from you. This explains why God's people no longer felt the face of the Lord shining on them. It was their sins. It wasn't the inability of God to hear or his lack of interest in hearing. Now, let me say this in conclusion, and this is very important. Isaiah didn't fully answer the question as to why someone is separated from God or feels separated from God. Sometimes we suffer, and the reason is not found in our sin and iniquity. The book of Job deals with this kind of suffering that does not come because of someone's sin, at least not directly. Nevertheless, Isaiah does give us one important answer. In our suffering, we should be quick to examine ourselves, and we should examine ourselves long before we would ever blame God. If God seems distant, he hasn't moved from you. Perhaps you have moved from him in some way. God has opened a door for you to come back to him today.